Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Anatomy of a Movie. It has been a long time since I've made one of these, and a lot has happened in the world. Before we begin today's video, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize a major loss to the world of not only Hollywood, but in general, when yesterday we lost one of the most iconic actors of all time in James Earl Jones. His incredible career spanned six decades, doing everything from Broadway to television to the big screen. His remarkable voice brought two of the most indelible roles to life. The first being in the 1994 movie Disney classic The Lion King as Mufasa. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. And of course the other being one of the most iconic villains of all time in Darth Vader. Which leads me into today's video. I will be breaking down a scene from arguably one of the most biggest franchises in the world, and I'm talking about Star Wars. But you're wondering what scene. It is the third act from Return of the Jedi and how we got here. With all that being said, if you are new to the channel, let me say first and foremost, thank you. And please consider hitting that like and subscribe button so other movie fans like yourself can enjoy these videos. Over the course of this series, I have touched upon other themes and have broken down scenes in other movies as well. The last one I did was for the coffee shop scene in Heat. So let's get started. But to do that, we have to go all the way back to Empire Strikes Back, to when Luke goes to Dagobah to get trained by Yoda. When Luke arrives, he has absolutely no confidence whatsoever, always questioning the Jedi Master, even going so far as to give us one of the best lines that can be used today. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. As Luke continues to train, he begins to gain that necessary belief to fight our villain, Darth Vader. During one of the exercises, he happens to see into the future, seeing that Han and Leia are in trouble with the Empire on Cloud City. He is urged by Ben and Yoda not to go, but he does it anyway to fight Vader. It's during this confrontation at the end of Empire that Luke learns the truth. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. And he is mortified. So as we go into Return of the Jedi, he is definitely much more confident, and that is displayed by him saving Han and Leia from the vile grips of Jabba the Hutt. This could be considered a major turning point for Luke because he was unable to accomplish this at the end of the last film. Before reuniting with the Alliance, there is one more thing he must do, and that is to see Yoda one last time. It's there that Luke learns of Leia being his sister, but more importantly, knowing he must face Vader one last time to become a Jedi. He tells Yoda, I can't kill my own father. Luke has a lot of regrets for rushing into the first confrontation with Vader, and even there on his deathbed, Yoda is teaching Luke patience. When Luke loses Yoda, he seems lost, and that's when he says, I can't go on alone. Shortly thereafter, Ben appears to comfort him, and they have a heart-to-heart -heart about the truth and perspective. Even from the beginning of the mission, when the team is on Endor, Luke feels though as he is jeopardizing everything. After everyone is reunited and 3PO is telling the story of the Ewoks, he can't help but have this feeling of apprehension that the Empire is closing in, and that's why he steps away for a quiet moment. Leia quickly notices this, and that's when she learns the truth about everything. At this point, Luke knows what he must do and sacrifices himself for the mission. The conversation that Luke and Vader have shortly thereafter is the beginning of the redemption arc for him. He is reluctant to give him over to the Emperor, but he knows he must do it. The first shot of the red lights moving up on the black background is so well done. When the Emperor tells Luke what he did, Vader just stands there saying nothing because he knows he is trying to enrage Luke enough to kill him. Just like his father, he uses his inner rage to incite the final lightsaber battle. The shot of the lightsabers with the Emperor's red eyes is awesome. 
This battle could represent all of the anger coming out of both of them, just like a verbal argument. And when Luke cuts off Vader's hand and he realizes what he did, that's when one of the most epic lines in Star Wars lore is said. Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. At this point, Luke's arc has concluded because remember, Yoda had said he had to face Darth Vader one last time in order to become a Jedi. When the Emperor is trying to kill Luke and looks like all is lost, Vader finishes his arc and picks up the Emperor and throws him over the rail, which essentially kills him. His parental instincts kick in and he sacrifices himself for his son, just like Luke did turning himself in. The final scene where Luke removes Vader's mask is heartbreaking because he has experienced the loss of another important figure. First it was Ben in Star Wars, and now in Jedi he loses Yoda and his father. At that point, he goes from being Darth Vader back to Anakin Skywalker. The music is so subtle, but effective. When Luke burns his father's body, that is the final thing to symbolize him turning him back to the good side. Even 40 years later, Return of the Jedi still remains one of the best conclusions to any trilogy ever put on screen. Stay tuned for more videos like this analyzing some of the greatest movie scenes out there. If you got any enjoyment out of this, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and becoming a channel member. The first month is completely free. Until next time, I'm David Steele, and I'll see you at the movies.